I came to you and said, let's talk about clustering, generally the first thing that will spring to mind is things like, oh, are we using Rack? Are we using multiple nodes? Are we having a distributed database, etc.? No, I want to talk about a different kind of clustering. This is a clustering that gives you faster queries with no code changes, no index changes, no changes to the database design, just your existing database, but the most important queries suddenly run faster. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Let's explore. I'm going to create a table called Customer Transactions, and it's representative of a typical retail site. I've got a transaction ID, a transaction date, a customer ID, every customer makes transactions, and the amount. It's a very simple table for this demo. Let's build it up with some data. Let me see. We're putting in 10 million rows. You can see there on line eight, 10 million rows of customer data. And on line four, we're assuming we have 1,000 distinct customers in this particular case. So I've got customer one to 1,000, DBMS random, gives me 1,000 random real numbers, and I'll truncate them to load up my table with 1,000 unique customer integers. Even before I build this application, I can be pretty confident that most customers are going to want to be able to see their own orders. So I'll put an index on the customer ID column in order to facilitate those kind of queries. Once I build my application, let's say this is a typical query that might come in. A customer logs on and says, show me the highest amount I've ever spent on any particular transaction. I'm not worried, of course, because I created that index on the customer ID column. But when I run that query, what happens? We see our familiar friend, the infinite progress indicator. That's going to end up as a unhappy customer. At this point, we're often thinking, well, it probably didn't use the index, the optimizer wasn't good enough, et cetera, et cetera. We often become critical of the optimizer. I log on and look at the execution plan and it looks perfect. It went and did the exact thing I expected it to do. It used the customer ID index that I created. So how come it was so slow? If I look at the data, the actual execution data, I can see it did nearly 9,000 physical reads. So even though the index was used, it was the 9,000 physical reads that slowed this down. That might seem like something I can't avoid. If I had to go get 9,000 physical IOs, then I have to pay that price. The reason there are so many IOs is if we look at the timeline, the timeline suggests that customers do things that customers like. Isn't that annoying sometimes? Customers log in when they want to buy things. And so we can see that customer 123 logged on very, very early in the year, and then maybe came along again in March, and then maybe September, and intermingled with their transactions is all the other customers' transactions as well. If we look at the rows for customer 123 in the table, tables consist of blocks, and because the rows arrive at random times, customer 123 is scattered throughout random blocks in the table. Thus, even though we've got an index sitting on top of the customer ID, as we choose to read each individual row for customer 123, the first row gets it from block number one. The second row, we got lucky. Block number one was already read, was probably in the buffer cache, and therefore we saved a physical IO. But the third row, a different block. Fourth row, different block, etc., etc., etc. Almost every single row for customer 123 ended up with a different physical IO to the table data because we can't fit the entire table into the buffer cache. Clustering at a table level lets us fix this. Here's the syntax we use. Alter table my customer transactions table. Add clustering by linear order customer ID. There are other options as well and you can even cluster by multiple columns but we'll keep it simple for this demonstration. That clustering command does nothing to the table. All it does is update the data dictionary. It's only when I do alter table move online that the data gets reshuffled. As a result, each individual customer's data gets relocated to be co-located in common blocks in the table. As a result, now when I do my index reads, the first index read immediately pulls that block into the buffer cache, thus dramatically improves the likelihood that all subsequent customer 123 rows will already be in the buffer cache as well. It dramatically lowers the physical IO cost. If I rerun my query, it still runs the same index scan as we saw before. But now, rather than 9,000 physical IOs, it's dropped to just 23 because all of those customer rows were very strongly co-located in a common set of blocks. So if you have systems that have quiet time where you can choose to relocate data from time to time, check out clustering. It'll let you relocate data 
to optimize for particular queries. Be aware that because you've reshuffled the data, queries on other columns may now incur a slightly increased cost, but you choose the clustering model that best suits the most important queries in your application. Mm -hmm.